Hi, I'm Mrs. Murdoch, and today we're going to talk about notes on solutions and the pH scale. So you have a note sheet that you can follow along with me here. And the first thing they ask, they have up, up at the top is to the definition of a solution. So a solution is a mixture made up of a solvent, a solvent, and one or more solutes. Solutes. There we go. So what's a solvent? A solvent is the larger part of a liquid solution. The larger part of a liquid solution. A lot of times, in fact most of the things we'll talk about, the solvent is water. That is the most common solvent on the earth. And you already remember learning that water is a universal solvent. Remember that that means that water is very good at dissolving lots of different kinds of things. So a solvent is that larger part of the liquid solution. The solute, predictably, is the smaller part. The smaller part of a liquid solution. All right. For example, like the salt. Salt that I dissolved in the water the other day when you were putting drops on a penny, right? So a salt solution, water is the solvent and salt is the solute that you dissolve into it. All right. All right, so I'm going to just keep going here. Now we have an idea of what those terms mean. Let's, uh, let's take them out for a spin here. So examples of solutions. The most common solvent we will encounter is water, which, as you know, dissolves many substances very easily. So for example, with salt water, again, what's the solvent? The water is the solvent, and the solute is salt. Good. For orange soda. What do you think the solvent is? Water. Still water, yeah. All of the sodas that you drink, the main part of those sodas is water. And what do you think are solutes that you would find in a soda? Definitely sugar. There's a lot of, and that would be something that would be dissolved in there. What makes the bubbles? Carbon dioxide, Carbon dioxide gas. Very good, yes. And there's probably other flavorings in there that we could add, but that's pretty good. We're going to stop with that. Good job. Okay. What about your blood plasma, the liquid in your blood? What do you think the solvent is there? Water again. Most of your blood is water. And now what kinds of things do you think are dissolved in your blood? Well, true red blood cells are there, but they're not a solvent. They are at the cellular level. Proteins, sure, yeah. You do have some proteins. Uh, I would say more like, though, you have glucose. Have you ever heard of blood glucose? Blood glucose is a very important uh, thing to maintain. Let me pull this up a little bit so you can see it better. Okay, blood glucose. You also have salt dissolved in your bloodstream. You need a certain amount of sodium, actually, to, to live. It, uh, there's actually a, a level of that. There's lots of things dissolved in your blood. You also better have some uh, oxygen in there or you'd be in real trouble. Okay. All right. What about vinegar? What do you think the solvent is there? Water again. There's our universal solvent. And in vinegar, the actual, the actual solute in vinegar, you probably won't come up with this, but it's something called acetic acid. An acetic acid is actually looks like this. It's got two carbons and some oxygens and hydrogens like this. That is what acetic acid looks like. <clears throat> so that's actually, that's actually what makes vinegar taste like vinegar, is that you've got a bunch of that acid in there. 
And um, it, it also makes the pH of vinegar acidic, which is another thing we'll talk about. Do you guys like vinegar on your salad? No. Or in other, in other ways? No? <laughs> there actually is um, vinegar in a lot of the salad dressings that you eat. So maybe you don't like outright vinegar, but there may be mixtures of um, vinegar in salad. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to keep going down here. You don't have to draw. You don't have to draw this. I just drew it for you, just out of curiosity. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go down to descriptions of solutions now. What does the word concentrated mean? What do you think? Right. Okay. So concentrated means means a solution has a high amount of solute dissolved in it. Okay, so concentrated means a solution has a high amount of solute dissolved in it. So when you have concentrated orange juice, you know that there's lots of orange, orangey flavor in there, right? I'll give you a minute to get that down. Yeah, it'll be there for you later if you miss something, so don't worry. What about dilute? If a solution is dilute, what does that mean? Yeah. That's exactly it. It's the opposite of concentrated. Good. Okay. So that means a solution has a low amount of solute dissolved in it. Okay. Let me bring this down. Let me go down here. Okay, so here, this is, this is easy to do. We're just going to circle the correct answer here. So if you have a solution of salt water and you add more salt, the solution will become which one? It will become more concentrated because you're adding more solute, making it more concentrated. Yes? Let's go to these other ones. If you have a solution of salt water and you add more water, the solution will become more dilute because you're adding more solvent, right? You're adding more solvent, so you're spreading out the salt molecules and making them less concentrated, okay? What if you have a solution of salt water and you pour half of it down the drain? Will the concentration change? Think about it. Just because you have less of the solution doesn't mean the concentration changes. So no, that won't change the concentration, right? That won't change the concentration of the, of the solution that you have left. It'll still be the same, you just have less of it, right? The density of molecules in there will still be the same. That's, that's a really important thing to understand, right? Okay. So. Now let's move on to talking about acids and bases. Acids and bases are a good thing to talk about when you're talking about solutions because all an acid or a base is, is different concentrations of solutions with something called hydrogen ions in them. So I'm not gonna read through all of this, you can read through that, but pH is a measure of hydrogen ion concentration. A hydrogen ion looks like this. It's an atom of hydrogen that has a positive charge on it. Very, very small. It's actually a really small particle. And the more of these there are in solution, since this would be the solute, the stronger the acid would be. And the less hydrogen ions there are in solution, the, more, the less acidic and maybe more basic the solution would be. So let's go to the pH scale and kind of do the, a visual on this. So um, how many of you remember this from middle school? Yeah, you've, known, you've seen pH scale before. Okay, so pH scale goes from 0 to 14. And neutral 
is right in the middle. pH 7 means you have, um, you have a neutral solution that's not an acid or a base. It's right in the middle. And pure water would be the most neutral solution, right? So this would be the pH of water. But as you go this way, as you go down, you increase more and more hydrogen ions going down this way, you get a stronger and stronger and stronger acid. As you go this way, and you have fewer and fewer hydrogen ions, you get more and more and more basic. Okay, so now let's go to some questions. If a solution has a pH of four, is it an acid or a base? Look up here. Right, so if it's here, it's an acid. Good, so that is acidic. All right, let's go down to a pH of 12. Acidic or basic? Basic, because it's higher than seven, so that's a base. What if you're comparing a pH of two to a pH of five? Which is the stronger acid? This one, yes, because as you go closer and closer to either direction, you're getting stronger and stronger and stronger acid here. So this is a stronger acid than this one, even though they're both acids. Same for the other side. If you had base, if you had a pH of 12 versus a pH of 9, this is the stronger base because it's further extreme, right? Over to the right. Okay, and that is my talk on solutions and acids and bases, and I hope that's helpful.